sorted, ready. <laughs> Should yeah. we eat other for food? Sausage sandwiches. <laughs> nice, nice. I, I've already had my food. I've had uh, uh, Frosties with some milk. And then for my second breakfast, I had two tins of sardines and tomato sauce. Mm. What'd you have, Matt? Just some jam on toast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fair enough. <laughs> Usually I'd have four eggs instead of the sardines, but because I'm having pizza tonight, um, I thought I, I, I couldn't have the eggs because they were too fatty and they didn't have enough protein. So I thought, fuck it, I'll put the sardines in, get a bit more protein and less fat. So, right. you know, that's how, how it's going. But anyway, right, so we'll start off with an intro. Who wants to go today? Matt, I don't I mean, think Matt, you've done one. I haven't done yeah. one yet, have I? Yeah. Okay. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the podcast. So this is the third one we are doing with me, Milos, and Jordan. Hope you guys enjoy it. Make sure you hit down the like button below and hit the subscribe to all of our channels and check out our Instas. All the links will be down in the bio. So who wants to start with today? I'll go. Right. So I, I'm not sure how, how truth and how many restrictions are going to be lifted, but I think I've seen on the news that in this week coming up, they're looking at lifting restrictions on the lockdown. Yeah. And I think like the rumors are like, it'll be like picnics and country walks and stuff like that. But my thing is like me and Ty have been running for the past two, three weeks. And we've been seeing people do fucking picnics and country walks all the fucking time. Every time we'd be on a run, there'll be someone in the fucking park having a little picnic or some shit like that with their kids. So I think that is a bit of a useless fucking lift because everyone's doing it anyway. Yeah. Um, I think we need to like open like the gyms and the doctors. Well, as you say that, um, have you seen on YouTube the Telegraph what they posted yesterday? No. They, I seen it this morning and as I woke up, I thought, oh my God. So I've texted my managers to ask because we had an intercoms come through. So all the PTs get emails uh, come through from head office uh, talking about what's going on for the next month and, you know, things like that. We had a new document coming saying we were coming off furlong to now working and we were giving out dedicated work to do. This could require traveling and things like that. But it only specified on my one, Hereford. So we were like, what's this going on? Like, why are we going back to working all of a sudden? Um, turns out on the Telegraph posted this morning with our pure gym executive and literally my manager is just messaging me now actually because I asked him to confirm it. The Pure Gym is actually looking to reopen, and he has just said now, we're looking to open 15 to 20 clubs to see if it first opens, but so that's very soon. And it's to be restricted so that we're going to cut half the equipment out, and all the PTs have to wear face masks and gloves, and we have to just wipe down all the equipment, like, all the time. Regularly, yeah. Yeah, and that's going to be just the instance we're going to do. So the gyms, the Pure Gym, will, are starting to slowly reopen, and we are reactivating. Pure Gym. Right, let me see how much Pure Gym interest it costs. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good, though. Like, that would be sick. Yeah. And, like, the walk thing, like, I cannot wait to go back to the Welsh Mountains. Like, yeah. I have not been up the fan and done the fan dance in such a long time. Mm. I'm not going to lie. I've done it once with you, George. But, obviously, I probably would have done it more if I was actually Hereford-based. Um, but it is so much fun. That, mm. that, that fucking hike it is so much fun, especially when you think you might die. <laughs> yeah, I've been up like four times. Like, I went up four times, and I think three, three of them, <laughs> no, like two of them, <laughs> I nearly died. <laughs> like, we had the one right before the corona where we got caught in a blizzard on top of the fan at, like, <laughs> 85 miles per hour winds at pitch black snow everywhere and then the other one was when cam went walkies when he was not meant to yeah yeah because uh, when you went up it was fairly fairly like uneventful wasn't it like we just did it well the only thing that was eventful is the fact that it went dark real quick yeah and like then like we couldn't see anything the, the we had like really shit torches <laughs> And then we were going up places that we couldn't see further than like two meters because the thick, like the fog was so oh, thick. Oh yeah, the fog. Yeah, and we were like literally like all we could see is about a meter radius around us, right? We were fucking walking on the side of the cliff, and every time we saw like a pile of rocks, we were like, "Oh, we're there!" Oh, we weren't. We did have a what, like an hour, five hundred meters. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> the longest 500 meters of my life. Oh, Matt, I'll have to take you guys up like all three together, all three of us. It's so fucking fun. And chance I'll, I'll probably get lost as well because I don't really know the route. So it'll be even fun, even more fun. Oh, do you know what, mate? I've done that once, mate. I know it. I know off by heart now. I could do it every day. We should do it at night. Yeah. Well, you've got to do the we camp. Should... What, 24-hour camp? You've got to do the 24 24- That was actually your thing for getting 1,000 subscribers, wasn't it? Was it? I'll have to go back for the video. I don't think it was. Yeah, Matt, we said to him, we were like, if you hit a thousand subscribers, you have to come up the fan on your own and camp for 24 hours, 12 o'clock till 12 o'clock. <laughs> I don't think I'd survive. You'd be all right now, it's warm. Yeah, but yeah, nah, come on, up the fan, it'll be fucking cold. Even at like. It is, yeah. It'll be colder than my fucking flat, so. <laughs> 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 maybe not yeah but um back to it so pure gyms might be reopening that's good I know you won't know anything about JD gyms no I wouldn't know no idea but I'm thinking if if pure gym is making that move right and if Telegraph has said that then I think other big gyms are probably going to follow suit as well but Obviously, I, I don't know. I think, like, if Pure Gym goes, I think independent gyms will come back because, obviously, the independent ones will have to because, you yeah. know, they have, like, a corporate fucking backing. But I'm not sure about the other big ones because I'm with Nuffield fucking Health. So that's, like, the fucking private hospital. So I'm not sure how they're going to play that shit out. So you think it's too early, think... though? I don't think it is. I think it's I think... fucking perfect time. I think yeah. it might be a bit too early. I think the... the... Executive guy from Pure Gym was saying that it's a great opportunity for, for health and fitness really to to be reintroduced because it's like it's meant to be the main big thing. Like if people are not getting healthy and fit now, this is for them to jump in and be like, look, you need to get healthy and fit. So mm. I think it's more of a push. Yeah, There's, there'll be some scientific backing for it, but I still like. Don't get me wrong. Like I can't wait for the world to go back to normal. Trust me. Um, like, I've got loads of people that I really want to see who aren't in the country. Um, and I want to go home. Like, I went, I drove home yesterday, but I could only go home. I had to pick up a bag outside my house and then I had to drive and get back again. I couldn't even see anybody, really. Um, um, especially because the baby was there and stuff. Yeah, exactly. The there. I got to see the dogs, at least, um, mm. which is quite good. But other than that, I couldn't do anything. Um, and I had to go home for stuff I essentially needed for uni so um, it was a bit shit but at least I got out of the house roads were dead loads of police just it was brilliant it was like driving at Saturday at fucking two o'clock in the morning mm-hmm. it was like yeah. nobody was there it was brilliant like I was so happy like you'd go except there's a few dickheads on the road but um, there always is <laughs> yeah yeah when I take Tara <laughs> to work now because she's a key worker it honestly takes like fucking three minutes to like mm. get there and back the thing that slows me down the most is the fucking lights. Mm. But no, mate, if if the gyms were li- like reopen, I'd fucking it, even if it was just pure gym and if it was open in Chester, I'd fucking get it. I'd I'd totally fucking buy buy, buy the membership for like a couple of months because there's obviously no contract in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so you could just you could just get it and then cancel mm-hmm. it whenever. whenever but yeah. if I like it, I might keep it because at the moment Tara pays five pounds for my gym membership. A yeah. month, so fucking dirt cheap. But yeah, any, any, anything else anyone else has got? What about gyms? Well, just anything really. Any, any topics <laughs> and stuff like that. Well, I was going to say, obviously Boris released a statement saying that we've we're on the come down now. We're on the other end of this of the peak. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> when do you think life back in the UK? Obviously, I don't think it will ever go back to to what we are used to. Like personally, I think there'll be some, there will always be some form of social distancing to stop future pandemics, or there'll be something, something will change in our daily routine, which will, which won't bring us back to normality. But when will, when do you think we will go to like um, back to as close to normal as we can possibly be? So like free traveling, uh, clubs, pubs gyms like fully open when do you think that will all happen 
I reckon it'd be quite soon, soonish. I think this reintroducing now deliveries of like franchise restaurants and things like that that they're only doing delivery. Gyms are going to start to reopen slowly, and it's going to be like I think like a test. So I think it'll run for like three weeks, like they've been doing this um, extension. They'll do yeah. it for three weeks, see how it runs, see if any cases still decline while we're reopening gyms. Is it still working? And then I think then more clubs will start to open and more places will begin to open up as we go along. So it could be a case of maybe two, three more months and we could be back at full-on operation. Yeah. See, to be fair, with me, I thought it's been like, even with this, even with like the restrictions being lifted, I think we'll go back to normal probably like beginning of next year or early, late, like late, late this year, like November, December, like where things actually start to feel normal and like people aren't scared to leave the house because i feel like even if these like restrictions are going to be lifted like i feel like we're probably dumb enough to like as soon as the gyms are open to fucking go to them and i I'm, yes. honestly the fucking moment they said it's open at six in the morning i'll be there at five two waiting <laughs> like i'll fucking pitch up a tent to get into the gym first but people are going to be scared People are going to be fucking terrified to leave the house because they don't they, they, they don't believe it. Because even though people can say like, oh, we're going to make these restrictions, you know, half the gym's going to be open essentially, you know, half the equipment's going to be ready, we're going to be putting these things in. But I think people are going to be too scared to go to a gym because the gyms were classed as the highest risk before this whole pandemic sort of came came about. So I think people are going to be scared of the gyms. Yeah. And I feel people are going to be scared of going to public places because even though we're on the come down, that doesn't mean that there's no cases. Like cases are still like coming up. There's just less of them. Mm-hmm. So I think people are going to be petrified and terrified <laughs> for some time to come. And then sort of like around next year is when people are going to be coming out their show and actually believing that things have, you know, that there is a difference, you know, things of going back to normal and shit like that. Before yeah. coronavirus 2.0 strikes next January. <laughs> And it's back to this shit show. What animal next time, boys? <laughs> what are they scranning? I reckon puffer fish or something like that. Yeah, something stupid like that, you know. <laughs> yeah. Fucking hell. Yeah, I can't believe it. It's um, it's getting a bit, it's getting a bit ridiculous. I think like yesterday was so shit to be at home. I don't know if everyone else had this really good weather, but the weather yesterday was fucking stunning. So every and it's like. like me and Tara don't have a fucking garden. Yeah, and we were like, we got garden chairs because we were going to like go out like in the front of our flat where there's like a little path. But I was like thinking, like, first of all, we're going to look weird. Uh, <laughs> two, if someone wants to go around that, they can't. So like, we'd either have to be moving every couple of minutes or whatever. Or we'd just look fucking weird, to be fair. They're like white trash. In it, yeah, it would look like some fucking hillbillies from yeah. Alabama. Feet in a paddling some pool, like some bug yeah. wise there with your wife beater on. <laughs> yeah, we got under hair and all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus wept. Uh. But yeah, but like, it, it, it's so shit, like, we can't do anything. Like, we can go for a run, but again, you don't want to be like, you don't want to be that dickhead at the park that's just sitting around with their fucking wife and kids. And like, I think it was two days ago when we went, and there was like, a family, what I thought was a family standing by this pond, right? But then, like, behind them was two bikes and no one else in sight. And I was thinking, it's a bit weird to go on a family ride with two bikes and there's five people. Like, I don't know what sort of juggling shit they're doing whilst riding along and shit, but, you know, whoever. And then it came about that there was two different families just obviously came to the pond for a meter. And I was thinking, that's, that's fucking, that's against the point. Because like you, you can catch it from anything. Everyone's going to get do even essential shopping. Like, there's not a single person that isn't, right? But, I mean, like, there's probably people in the family that, that aren't going to be doing that. But you've got a person that's going to go out to do essential shopping. And, say, there's 100 people in that shop at the supermarket. That is 100 chances you might catch something if someone's got it. Or if one person there has it, that's putting 100 people at risk of possibly getting it. So I think like people are sort of like not taking these restrictions like careful enough, really. For British, what do you expect? Yeah, like I keep telling that to Tara. I was like, like essentially, Britain is great, and it was an empire. But I think people are living in the mindset that oh, we are the greatest country in the world. We can do whatever. 
but they're not looking at it as a country. They're looking at it themselves, thinking, I'm British, fuck what they say, I know better than they do. Yeah. Essentially, I, I don't want to race, race it to you guys, but essentially that is a bit of a, a, a common theme that goes on with like the British public and British people. I'm not saying all of them, because uh, it's not. Like Tara's like, re, like she works in healthcare, so she knows, she understands how serious this is. But then you got fucking Billy Bob down the park with his kids and his mate who just came down for a fucking pint because the wife's pissing them off because they're in like an isolation and stuff. And it's like things like that that put people at risk. And like, you know, there's cases of kids catching it. It's like babies catching it. Like it's a very low percentage, but if they do, it could be fatal. So you, like, you, you never know. And it's put, put, put other people's like family at risk. Yeah. But I, I do hope that in the next two months, things are going to be like lifted. But I don't think like, like I said, I don't think that the general public is going to go back to normal. But I think business will start flowing quite normally. Like I think deliveries are going to go back to normal. Like McDonald's are reopening. Is it next week? Yeah. Like, yeah, 15 restaurants to do deliveries and stuff like that. And I feel like things are going to start going back to normal. But then I think delivery service is going to be so much more used now more than ever. Like, even after this pandemic, I think more people are going to choose a delivery option rather than go to a restaurant or drive to Mackey's or something like that. So I think, like, fucking delivery, Justy are going to fucking shoot through the roof. So if you boys invest... I'm thinking that, but yeah, it's it, it, it's fucking wild. No, I might do um, for my marketing plan. I might do um, might do like a takeaway, like just eat or delivery, and be like what they need to do now in order to make sure, because they could go one or two ways about it, you know. Like, but the thing is, again, I feel like because it, it's only like. Contrary to the previous comment, it's only a minute amount of people that are flouting the rules still. Mm -hmm. Like the majority, and by I say majority, I'd say about 80 odd percent. From what I can see personally, being in Cardiff, which is a big city, I'd say 80% of people do only go in twos. They are just, they only just go for a walk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do everything right. But it's, it only takes that 20% to be like, nah, fuck that. I'm better than this. Yeah. And then that, that prolongs the opening of the gyms that prolongs the opening of, well, I don't really, yeah, I enjoy McDonald's, but I don't really live on it. So prolonged yeah. McDonald's or like normal cinemas and yeah, yeah, like entertainment, yeah, being able to go for a fucking hike. Like yeah. it, it, it is taking a piss and like, yeah, like you said, 20% it can all, you know, if people now here are the restrictions may be lifted, I think a lot of people are going to be thinking, ah, oh, Sam, you're going to fucking do whatever now. Yeah. And it might end up prolonging it and taking it like longer to like reopen all this shit, which it will be fucking really annoying because essentially, like it's fucking everyone else over as well as them, really, in yeah. the long run. It's fucking hell. I just but Matt, do you know like when about this pure gym thing is happening? I'm not actually sure, but I know all it's been said is that they are looking at opening 15 to 20, I think, over next week, I think. That's all we know. What what gyms are opening? No idea. I don't okay. know what, what's been announced as of, as of yet. I imagine it will be... I can't imagine they'll reopen things like London, because it's too big of a place. Mm. Like, I don't think they would be... With the heart of the city, and that's where the most cases are. If they were to open a gym there, it'd be fucking stupid. Yeah. I think they'll start looking at, I'm hoping, because that intercom said Hereford on it, so I'm hoping that they are opening smaller clubs, which will be Hereford, yeah. places, things maybe like Worcester, Gloucester, hmm. and those sort of countries. Uh, countries, cities. <laughs> Hereford is my country. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know, I don't know. Hopefully, I'm hope, hoping it's fucking Hereford, because... Hmm. Um, I can't. I can't do any more home workouts with just a dumbbell and a bloody resistant band. I know, oh, oh. mate. <laughs> like, I, honestly, like I, I said to myself like yesterday, and I was like thinking, I was like, fucking out. If if the news is that the gyms won't be open for like a couple of months, right? I am gonna buy some dumbbells 
because I cannot keep doing fucking exercises with like two dumbbells strapped together and a bag full of weights. Like it's yeah. getting ridiculous. I'll need to like look at getting some weights. Yeah. Have but, you guys, have you guys found that you're losing weight? Because I yeah. have lost. I'm because I'm doing like so much cardio now. Because I'm like, well, I have to do something, and I can only do like honestly with what I've got. I've got one easy bar with 10k, which I can put 20 kg on, um, as in 10 kg each side. And that's me then. That's 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 as much equipment as I've got. So I've been like trying to. I set myself a goal of trying to run 10 kilometers in under 50 minutes. But I have lost. So I went when I went back yesterday. My mum looked at me and she went, "Wow, you look so skinny." And I was like, "Mum, that's like worse than telling me I'm fat. Like I'd rather look too fat. I'm just losing losing all my mass." Um, like and yeah, so I just cannot wait to get back to normality, get back to normal eating. Because I'm obviously everyone's cutting down, I guess, because we can't work it yeah. off. Better to, I guess it's better to be skinny and shredded than, you know, bulky and fat. I guess. But um, yeah. Well, to be fair, like I, my goal was to like start losing weight. So I've lost like five kg in like three, four weeks, where I've like actually like set myself like you know I'm gonna start eating normally. You know, I'm going to start eating, like, healthy meals. Like, I, you know, I do, like, the 80-20 split where I have 80% clean fuel and then 20%, like, you know, it's not exactly cheap meals, but I'm still in my macros. So I still yeah. eat the amount of calories I should, but I try to make it as flexible as possible. So, like, because before, like, I would be eating at my set time and then it will come to the point where Tara won't eat because she doesn't know what she wants to have. And I'm usually the brain of the operation about what we fucking have for dinner and stuff like that. We try to, like, do that. So what would happen? I would have my full day of eating, like 2,300, 2,400 or 500 calories. And then I'll get off of games at like 10. <laughs> Tara would be like, oh, I'm still hungry. I haven't had any food. And then we'll buy a fucking takeaway, which is like 3,000 calories in itself. Mm. So like, it was a deadly spiral. But we said, nah, like, if we have a takeaway, we'll make sure that it fits into our calories for the day. So that's like, we're ordering like a small takeaway essentially today. We're just going to have a pizza. But we said we would just want to have some nice-ish takeaway food so that's what we're gonna like start doing but i've lost five kg in the four weeks i think around four weeks now yeah but i'm gonna go try to get down to 88 yeah which should be 10 kg from what i was and then i'm gonna assess what i'm looking like because like my biggest thing is i've never was i was never able to lose that little fucking pouch at the bottom of my tummy and I think it was because when I first like lost a ton load of weight, I went straight onto bulking. Like as soon as I got to that weight, I was like, all right, time to bulk. And I never let my body to like regenerate and like maintain and let it to like sort of fucking get normal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this for a while. Then I'm going to maintain for like a month or two. And then I'm going to do like a real lean bulk. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I do see what you mean. Like, I think like with you guys, especially because like you guys have always got, I've been like kind of going for mass and stuff like that. I think it is for you guys, it's probably going to be quite bad because you're probably going to be dropping quite a bit of weight from like not essentially not eating enough, but because your body's not having the right like exercise. So you might end up, yeah, like cutting down so many more calories than you actually need to. Yeah. I, I, I was looking through my photos the other day. You know, you just did four and you flick it through your phone i was looking at photos of when i was doing my competition prep yeah and the, the amount of sheer size i i see myself from there to now i've lost and i'm like oh my god this is yeah. this, is, an, this is annoying me now because like yeah. i can look back at a photo i'm like fucking hell i look filled out there i, I take a photo now i'm like where have i gone where have i lost yeah. this all <laughs> like, yeah where's it all gone <laughs> yeah how, no. much, how much do you weigh Matt, now 96 kg how much did you weigh before 108 Fuck you know mate see yeah. i i've got a question actually matt see i look like i should weigh more than i actually weigh so i actually weigh like when i was when the gyms were open i weighed 82 kg my goal was to get to 85 and then cut down to about 80 for summer but god knows what i weigh now but i imagine it's somewhere in the in the medium to high 70s yeah hmm. now because I need to get that to about 85. So I need to gain about 10 kg, but also keep my power, speed, agility, um, and flexibility all for being athletic. So 
you know, how, what, what training do I need to do? Because obviously I need to put size on, but I need it to be proper mass. You know, I need to be able to bump people off. I would probably say you need to do a split between strength and hypertrophy training. So you, that way you can build strength, but size at the same time. Because otherwise, yeah. so it's just a combination of your, I mean, it's quite in depth, but your RPEs and the, the combination of reps. So you're yeah. going to be looking, if you do like, I would do like either, it's quite difficult. To, it's like a complex sort of style training, what I call is like hybrid. So you could split it up as you do two days of like hypertrophy, two days of strength, and one day of like mixed. Yeah. Or you could do like a, a mixture of like, as you're doing your training, like normally five day split, you could do two sets of strength, two sets of hypertrophy. So that way you're balancing it out. But then yeah. this is where you have to be really in depth with your figures and numbers. So if you test your one row max, let's say your one row max on bench is, I don't know, 100, for instance, your two, two sets of six to eight would have to be 80% of that. So you'd be hitting 80 kg for six yeah. weight reps. Your hypertrophy needs to be about 50 to 75%. So you need to hit that around about 50 to 75 kg for eight to 12 reps to build size. And you'd have to continuously do, do that just over like the periods of time. And obviously, as you're increasing, it's like anything with program, progressive overload. So you just increase by a certain amount of weight each week or by rep. And you do that to be able to gain strength, gain muscle at a period of time. Diet side, it's with nutrition, it's a very dark realm because there's not really any scientific facts of like what's right, what's wrong. Yeah. So as long as your protein is enough, high enough, and you get, it's, it's all about calories in all, in all fairness. Like if someone says like, oh, you drop, you do like, you like her keto. Yeah, I've tried keto before, it just wasn't for me. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's all, like there's no point in really um, removing a source of food because you'll just feel shit for yourself. So like, and plus carbs is your main source of energy. And if you're trying to build speed and power and hypertrophy, like you need that those carbs yeah. to be able to give you energy for it so i mean i did a video actually yesterday about it about how to calculate your mass rate but um there was one if you could do like lower carb moderate carb high carb but if you're looking at building size quick well, it's not i don't even care really for size it's just like i need to be more i think i need to be more dense yeah so i need to i need to weigh i need to weigh more yeah if that makes sense so i think Drink a lot more water because that will obviously flush your body out. That will also, when you have carbs, carbs will hold water weight. So that's what will make you feel more bulky and fill out and will gain more weight almost. Yeah. Just increasing, increase your calories, but do it at a slow rate. Don't, don't, don't go from like, say, 4,000 calories to 6,000 calories because your body yeah. will just be excessively calorie. Slow, slow bulk it. So maybe increase by 200 calories and then each week increase it by 100 calories. Like that, just so you can slowly increase your weight, but you're doing it lean, so you're not going to just go like boom and then you just increase like two kg worth of fat and you're like, oh, fuck. yeah, no, definitely. Well, that, that's like because I was getting there, I was like, cause I was filling out a little bit towards um the start, and then obviously the season was coming back around, so I needed to make sure that that was all trimmed muscle. Yeah. So I was doing a lot more cardio, um, as I think you should do on any workout, you know, you need to be. Decent size. You can look good on the outside, but you've got to look after your heart and your everything on the inside. Um, but I don't know, because it's weird. Cause I, I could turn around, but then obviously I've got to have the um, the physio. Thanks to Milos for breaking my shoulder. I don't do anything. Asshole. Um, and I told you I didn't want to do 115. Told you. Doesn't he double my weight? <laughs> like my actual body weight. <laughs> Me? Not my fault. <laughs> Uh, it's not my fault. It was no. your fault. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, bench press. <laughs> yeah, you, I couldn't believe it. I'd finished my workout and I didn't even know he was in Hereford. I'd look up, I turn from the impure gym in Hereford, I look out of the bench, I look towards the door and I see a big, big tall man. I'm like, that's fucking Milos. What's he doing in Hereford? Um, yeah. And he comes over to me and he's like, oh, I'm doing bench as well, mate. And he's like, let me just hop on. Turns out, so I finished my workout for bench. Then I did his workout for bench. And then we did PBs because we're obviously competitive little bastards. And then uh, he, I got to 110, which, is, which was my current PB. And I was like, oh, I want to go 112. You know, I just want to beat 110. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. um, it took me such a long time to get to 110, like actually bring it down slowly, touching my chest and then pushing it up. And then he was like, nah, mate, you did that easy. Go 115, go 115. So I literally got the 115, brought it down slowly, tried to push it up. And I just felt my left shoulder just went. And I was like, oh my God, what have I done? <laughs> and I couldn't even do anything after that. And Milos kept thinking that it was like uh, doms and stuff. Like I'd maybe just got filled up with lactic acid. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. It's just, I, can't, I still can't. <laughs> <laughs> Again, and not my fault, mate. Like all I all I did was just like, yeah, come on, mate, just try it. And and you you decided to go, yeah, fuck it. All right, I'll do it. I'll do it. Because you kept saying to you, you kept going, do it, do it, do it. Go, on, George, you'll do it. It's easy. One fifteen's easy, easy, easy. Not my fault. You shouldn't have made that one time look that easy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I mean, I think you'll be all right, right? Well, like, I have an operation now. You know, put my life on hold for a couple. Of <laughs> Again, it's not, you know, I'm fucking over my Minor foot. things, man. <sighs> no, if I wanted to read Yeah, to it. be fair, your shoulder was fucked before me. That right. was my other shoulder. You managed to do the other one in. <laughs> yeah. So I've had operation on one shoulder, operation on my nose, and operation on my other shoulder. So really, like, you just got sensitive shoulders. So essentially, it's still not my fault. Like, I feel like it's your shoulder's fault. <sighs> yeah, if I didn't love you... No, I'd, I'd fucking hate you. <laughs> That's a good one. I like that. Um, but um, has anyone's plans changed now? Like, what they, what the first thing that they're going to do after after lockdown? I don't want to say it because it's quite crude, but I know exactly what I'm going to try and do the first thing out of lockdown. No, nah, come on, man. Well, first of all, I'm going to have sex. <laughs> Who's going to let you? What do you mean? I've got me. I've got. I don't want to don't want to drop any deets or anything, but you know something's happening and it's going well. Um, she's everything I like as well. Oh, yeah, you know she's ticked she ticked all the boxes and more. Um, really lovely person. Um, I'm not going to say her name or anything, but um, yeah, she's amazing. I think um, we've been we've had like a few virtual virtual dates. Which sounds really sad, but like we have. <laughs> um, you, mate, you just got to adapt, innit? Yeah, innit, mate. You know, we've, had, we've been on that Netflix party thing. We're having like a, we have like a video chats like this sometimes. We call every night pretty much. Um, and she might be coming back to the UK in like uh, July, she told me last night. So. Where's she from? Bulgaria. I fucking knew it. <laughs> <laughs> You know me, mate. Gordon yeah, loves the Eastern Europeans. I've done my time with the English girls. Honestly, like this, this whole break I've had has been like, you know, it's been fruitful. I give you that. It's been very fruitful. And I've done some things I'm not grand, like really happy of. And I've done some things I'm really happy of. Um, but, uh, you know, I think it's time to uh, just be with the one one person again, not fucking everybody. Why <laughs> are you lost, slut? <laughs> I mean, that was my plan, you know, after I was like, fuck it, I'm going to be a man slag. And then I did for a bit. And then I was like, I was like, wow, I don't want to do this any longer. It's a bit, um, it's a bit shit. Unethical. Well, not even unethical, because I don't think there's anything wrong with it. You know, if you go out and a girl comes up to you and goes and starts getting with you and you're like, well, it's not unethical for me to want to be with, to sleep with that person. But you don't feel great in the morning, do you? Because you're like, oh, what? you know, get out of my bed. Who is this? <laughs> Get out of the bed. Yeah, what's your name again? Sorry, like trying to find her purse to look at her ID. Like, fuck, what was it? Was it? Was it? Was it this or this? Well, I've only done it a couple of times, and uh, yeah, it's 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 it's. it's but to be fair, I don't find things awkward, and I never make situations awkward. So even after like a like one night stand, I'm still the life of the party. You're I like right. I act like nothing happened. I, that that was my trick. I would just like, yeah, so you're right. Nice. No, yeah. Eggs and bacon. All right, sounds Eggs good. and bacon. Yeah. You got a bit of a headache? I'll get some paracetamol. Don't you worry about that. Yeah, he's, he's never done that call to you me. Uber. Then, <laughs> he's never done that to me. I've slept with Milos. Men, not like that, but I've slept with him in, a, in like a bed on a floor or on a pop there mattress many a times. Yeah, um, because you've never slept at mine. 
But that's what happens at my house. I did. I do like the, the five star service at my house. But like, if I'm at yours, I'm expecting that back. So <laughs> essentially, you should have done that to me. Yeah. Where was Not my anymore. morning cuddle? <laughs> oh, yeah, hey, mate. I love a good spoon in the morning. <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't really go out anymore, to be honest. Like, obviously, I can't now. But like, even before, like, yeah. maybe out. Like, I think I've only went out like once or twice. I didn't even drink. I was like. You know, I'm done with it now, I think. Like, yeah, mate, no are so boring. It's just everyone's an asshole. You just, everyone comes up to you and you're just like, mate, I will chin you if you don't leave me alone. <laughs> like, I swear to God, just go away. I didn't come up to you, you know, stop spilling your drinks on me. This shirt costs fucking 50 quid. Yeah. I'm like, I don't need you to come into my life. Just fuck off. I'm here with my mates. I want to have a drink. I want to have a stupid dance. And then I want to get, I want to go home and try and get up for the gym tomorrow. Not fight with you, get arrested, or get told off. Possibly lose my uni degree and everything else I want to do in my life just because some little individual can't handle his drink properly. Yeah, I think yeah. that like, in Hereford that's a massive problem. But I've never really had that sort of problems in like Cardiff or Chester or Liverpool and stuff like that. And I've always had good nights out. But the thing that actually like well. I stopped drinking because one, it became quite expensive to to, to drink on nights out. Yeah. And two, you just when you jump out of the drinking rut and like for example, like I did that like remember when me and you did like the fucking nearly like a full year of drinking every weekend. Like yeah, every man. Friday and Saturday. And it got to a point where we stopped and then we were like, All right, I'm just gonna I'm gonna take my training seriously because I wanted to lose a bit more weight. You took your gym more seriously and stuff like that. And then after that, I did it for like two, three months. And after that, I just never wanted to go back to drinking. Yeah. I was just like the, the, the amount of days that we spent in the, in a gym, right? After a night out, fucking hanging out of our assholes, right? And doing a full workout, right? <laughs> Still probably intoxicated, right? On a hot summer day in the fucking Halo Leisure Pool gym where there was fucking no air con. That's right? the OG gym. And then, and then we'd do sprints to get it out of our system, right? For like five minutes. And then we'd always think, ah, oh, I know what will help, right? Let's go in the sauna for half an hour. <laughs> that was like. Oh. No, it's, yeah, it's, it's Cam still on. Oh, there we, there we are. I see it. So, um, Matt was just going to tell us, me lost about some of his little anecdotes of his uh, great nights out in, in uh, Hereford's finest establishments. Uh. <laughs> so, um, um, not really. I've, I've had a few. I mean, I've had a few nights out, but just not. I, I haven't drank really properly for like a year, year and a half. Like, I kind of just stopped and I just stopped going out because I was just so focused on the gym. That I was just so focused, like just training all the time. Like, I just didn't care about alcohol. Like I, it was that point in my life where I was like, nah. I just, every, all my mates were like, let's go out, let's go out, and I'm like, nah, I'm going to gym. <laughs> yeah, no. Like I only got yeah. like, back in the time, like when I was like 18. I mean, I was out every Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I was always out. Yeah. Like you know, you're a normal, typical 18 year old lad. Like just always out on the piss, doing all sorts. Like I just. I just got to yeah. Play. Yeah, I got to about 20, 21. I thought, no, nah, that's it. Really well. like, I just need to focus on someone else. I, I, I literally did. Like when I turned eighteen, we did let, like that year of like drinking every you know every fucking week, and then after that, I was stopped. And then by the time I was fucking twenty, I'd I'd refuse to go most nights out. Yeah. I went to uni and I was skipping nights out because I was just like, oh, that's fucking boring. I'd rather either go to the gym now or I'd rather go to the gym like early in the morning, like tomorrow. Because if I go out drinking, I'm not fucking going to be making it to the gym. And if I yeah. do, it would have to be like late, late at night before I sober up and actually feel all right to do it. Because I've always found that like after a night out, if I go to the gym, it, it's going to be the worst training session ever yeah. if I don't give my body enough rest. So I've always felt like one, I'd either have to cut it short because I feel physically fucking sick. Or I won't be able to do fucking half the shit I would usually do. Yeah. But to be fair, I, I think the best things I, I used to love doing is like whenever me and Tara came back, she do every time she come back, usually she'd want to meet up with the girls, go for her drinks and stuff like that. And I'd literally take her to Hereford, drop her off, where whatever location it was, 
and I'd drive straight to the gym. Mm-hmm. And I was like, would would get back at like fucking eight, nine. I'd drop her off and I'd be straight to the fucking gym, pre-workout ready in the fucking car, popping it just before I pull up to the gym and it's fucking go time. And I'll be at the gym till fucking 12 at least. Because like, you know, when it's like quiet and it's dead and you've got nothing to worry about for the rest of the night. Yeah. I don't mind spending three, four hours at the gym then. Yeah. Like usually if it's like, if I get to the gym for like five or six, I want to get it done in about two hours. But if it's late at night and I have nothing else to do, like I don't have to go home back to Tara or anything like that. And I can spend four hours at the gym easily. Just like, I won't obviously intensely work out for four hours straight, but I'll do all my exercises, I'll take the right amount of rests, have a bit, a bit of piss about, maybe call someone, you know, watch a YouTube video, <laughs> pitch up the tent, go, have a nap. Yeah, <laughs> have a nap room. on the roll mats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> have a flex session in the mirrors upstairs. Hit it, yeah. But honestly, like, I have missed that so much. Like the, the the best one is I love obviously the pure gym in Hereford because I'd just be able to go there late at night and it'll be like usually by twelve there's fucking no one there and there's only a few select people so you can have like a little fucking flex off with yourself upstairs in the in the mirrors. The, with uh, my gym here it's shit because it's only open till nine, so yeah. and and it's still like even till nine there's still quite a lot of people in there and it's it's a health and fitness gym it's not a fucking it's not like a bodybuilding or like a fuck boy gym or anything like that. So like I'd feel like a scum if I started like <laughs> taking my top off and fucking flexing in the mirrors and shit like that. Like have it's not found, that type. Uh, have you found that um, the pure gym lighting I think isn't very great for flexing? Yeah. I think like the ones upstairs in the uh, I guess in the studio, Matt, where you guys do all your like class PT sessions. I go in there and the lights are like in the middle of the room, so yeah. like, you have to like be about ten meters away from the mirror. Yeah. And then you're like, you're like this, and you're like, fuck, I look quite small. Yeah, what's going on? <laughs> yeah. like, look. You go close to the mirror and the light's behind you, so you can't see really much definition, even though you know it's there, because you've just seen it 10 steps back ago. And you're like, well, what? You can't find that sweet spot of, you know, I want it to look good, but I also want to look big as well. Yeah, because when I was doing my competition prep and I was having to do my posing uh lessons like I was teaching myself posing and I was doing all my practicing upstairs because I was yeah because even though I was a PT that a PT there I was too scared to go downstairs and just like pose in the downstairs yeah, yeah. freeway mirror. I'm like nah the lighting's good down there but I ain't posing down there I'll go upstairs in the studio where there's where there's fucking no one except yeah. there's some girl in the corner doing glute bridges and I'm in the corner like on the other side doing posing <laughs> <laughs> it's the most awkward thing ever but like the li- I know what you mean. The lighting is crap in there. Like you can't see anything. You have to step on the other side of the wall to be able to see yourself, and you're too far back then to actually see yeah. anything. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely terrifying. Yeah. I hate it. Like the best lighting I think in Hereford is, um, and I think Milos. I don't know if you've been to the leisure centre, Matt. The leisure centre toilets. The the big. Oh toilet. yeah, mate. You go in the toilet. The toilets. They're like orange lights, and it's just like a natural filter. Oh no, they're right by the mirror, a perfect angle. They're brilliant. I've always found the changing room ones, not the toilet ones. Oh, yeah, that's what I mean. The, the changing oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're fucking perfect, perfect distance from the mirror for you to take a fucking banging selfie. Yeah. Um, but they're also like the right fucking like the right light for it. So yeah, yeah. It, de- definitely by far one of the best. Yeah, one of the best lighting. <laughs> so but, if anyone here if wants a good pose picture, go to you know work out your gym across the road, then walk over. You know, extra bit of cardio. Walk over. Say you need to go to the toilet in the leisure centre. <laughs> Walk into the gym, you can just start taking your snaps. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking, yeah, definitely one of the best, best, best like, posing areas. Do you think but, gyms should provide posing rooms? Not, not, not fitness gyms. Nah. Like, bodybuilding gyms, but like most of them, they, they should. I don't think a lot of them do. But with bodybuilding gyms, like, it's just acceptable for anyone to just bang out, get in their fucking, you know, budgie Pants. smugglers. Yeah. And just fucking, you know, because that, that's essentially what they used to do performance, uh, uh, elite performance. Yeah. Like, yeah. at any point, mate, you don't know when it's coming, bang, some motherfucking that is like fucking budgie smugglers. <laughs> just like <laughs> in the mirror, sweaty, oiled up, big six foot motherfucker, <laughs> wider than the door frame that he just walks through. <laughs> <laughs> but like to be fair out of any gym that I've ever been to Elite Performance is like the best gym I've ever been to it sucks now because it's so fucking expensive but it's by far 
one of the best gyms I've ever been to in my life. My that was, um, no, there, there is another gym I've been to. I don't know if anyone's seen Dedicated Fitness. If you do have a minute, guys, after this, go check them out on Instagram. Dedicated Fitness in Liverpool, right? It is one of the most amazing gyms I have ever come across, right? It's got like, it's got like that fucking one color scheme across the whole gym. The membership there is 20 pounds a month. And they go up to, I think, 120 kg dumbbells. They have every fucking equipment for training that you could ever imagine there. And they have their own like massive shop with all the supplements and stuff like that. And I think they even do, you can get a fucking membership with them where they provide you with like protein and pre-workout for every time you come to the gym. Mm. So yeah, you, I, I think it was like 45, which is like for a fitness gym, that's probably like about normal what most people have paid. I've paid 45 pounds before for like a fitness gym. If I got to pay 45 pounds for an amazing gym plus supplements pre-workout and fucking like post-workout fucking protein shake that's fucking banging deal if you think about it especially when i used to go six days a fucking week yeah that pays for itself in the long run really but the worst thing is that like, they've got one in liverpool in the witness but they don't have one in chester which fucking sucks but there was rumors that it's meant to be coming out in chester because obviously because it's all so close proximity and they're only local like they're only like 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 a local Liverpool gym they were. They just started expanding this year, I believe. So if it fucking comes to like a chest Yeah, I'm on that. Gym like like no other. If you yeah. can think of a gym equipment or a gym apparatus that you'd want at your gym, that place has got it. See, I I prefer I think my favourite gym at the moment, I would say, would be the Hereford Pure Gym, because it's the, the pure gym in Cardiff is too big, as in like you go in there and you like you have to work out in a jumper because you get you you, you probably catch a cold in there, and like to some people that's all right because they've got they've got like the body fat in that to keep themselves warm. Where I yeah. go in, I have to either do cardio fifteen minutes in a jumper to warm up, to get a sweat on, or not. But when I go to one in Hereford, like I still wear jumpers and that when I when I do cardio just to work a little bit harder. But I think it's brilliant, you know. Nobody in, I think, in the pure gym in Hereford is. I think I've I've been there an awful lot, and I go there at ridiculous times. Sometimes I go at two in the morning, sometimes I go at fucking half eight in the afternoon. Sometimes I go at peak, and everybody in there is amazing. Like the PT staff, like you, Matt, and everybody else, like um, you, Matt, not Matt, uh, Mike, um, again. <laughs> Asia, they're all bloody. They're all really like uh, like Charlie and all. They're all amazing people. They're really lovely, um, down to earth, happy. And then like, but I, I always thought when I went to Elite, I always thought like you weren't welcome. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, like it's like, and I, I, I know what you mean because it's fucking it's it's an intimidating place. And I think if I went to Elite by myself, I wouldn't have stuck out for very long. Yeah. Right. I, I feel like you but have then to again, you have to take something. I found that like Elite is very friendly. Like the the bloke Lindsay and like the fucking staff at the like tills and stuff like that, amazingly helpful. Like most of them want to have a chat with you when you're walking in. I hate that. Like I hate the whole having a fucking chat at gym shit. Like, but like they want to be like a community, which is amazing because like most people, majority of people want like a community to be a part of for like some of that fitness and stuff like that. I'm, I'm not like that. I, I, I hate community side of things. That's because I hate most people. But like they've always wanted to have a chat, you know, I'd have like, you know, I'd be polite and have a chat back and stuff like that. But my fucking goal when I went to the gym was to go to the gym and work out. I didn't give a fuck if there was a massive bloke on the apparatus I was using. I'd ask if I can jump in. If he growled at me back, I'd fucking move. <laughs> he run. But, yeah. mate, honestly, I have never had anyone be rude to me at the gym. At that gym, never. There's not been a single, like, big bodybuilding bloke that's ever come up to me, wanted to use my apparatus, and told me to, like, fuck off and not use it because I'm a bitch. Oh, no, He's always been, that. like... Yeah, but, like, it, it is intimidating because, like, when you see the size of people and the physique of people that go there... Because like, like people, the thing is, people at Pure Gym have great physiques. So don't get me wrong. Like, look at yeah. Matt. Like, he looks like a bloody he's chiselled out of fucking stone. <laughs> but then you got like, um, like I would say, like, yeah, I, I would, I would class myself as someone that take. I obviously take fitness very seriously. You know, I go to the gym 
pretty much every day. I do a lot of um, activities. But the thing is, like, I go to the gym. Most of the time is to for really for stress. Sometimes it is just to be a bit sociable, you know, see the mates in the gym, have a chat, have a workout, have some fun. But the majority of mine is I go to the gym to better myself on the American football pitch. Mm. Um, and I feel like it would be hard to do that at elite because obviously I, I would say I train like athletically. Um, I don't train to be like, like I don't train to go into competitions. I train specifically for my role of I get the ball, I run into people, push them out of the way. Yeah. Um, so like when I go, I do, I don't think, like I know people that do go to elite who will play for American football with me. And it's amazing. Like, don't get me wrong, Lindsay is a lovely guy, but you go in there and I feel like as soon as you go in there, it's like I couldn't go and have that social aspect of going with my friends, you know, maybe have a laugh and that. Because I feel, you know, go in there, have a chill, have a chat about anything. Because you go in there and you're like, right, the tone is serious, but probably too serious for me, considering I'm not going in there to go to a competition. I'm going in there to just, you know, be athletic to then beat my opponent because it's, it's different sort of, it's a different vibe I go for. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I do know what you mean. And it, it, it is like, it's not for everyone. Like, I don't yeah. think you could like, even some, some of the, like, I, I think you try, tried that out, Matt, the new uh, performance uh, elite, but it just wasn't for you, was it? I was there for a while. Yeah. Yeah. It's and just... it's, it, it, it honestly, it, it isn't for everyone. It's, it, it's a different sort of environment. And, um, yeah, like like you said, it it can be intimidating. It it, it can, like. Yeah. <clears throat> but the thing is, like, if you're looking for like a community, you want to have a bit of a laugh and stuff like that and whatnot, and you don't want to like look. If, if you don't want to embarrass yourself, then probably elite may not be the one for you because you're obviously like scared of like judgment and stuff like that. But honestly, if if you guys, if anyone watching wants to check out a gym and you want to take your fucking fitness like journey proper seriously, then I'd suggest Matt own fitness or Judd Parham fitness, ask him for some tips and tricks and stuff like that. But again, like fucking honestly, cause I, I was at least two years and I cannot say a bad thing about it. Yeah, like, like about him or the sense. gym. And it was like, it's honestly incredible. Every time it was just like such a fucking pleasure to be like, it was so fun to be there because of the equipment, the things you'd be able to get done. And to be fair, it was fun to see, the, the fucking big guys because mm. obviously at pure gym you don't exactly see like body big fucking man mass monsters or like proper like people what are you trying to say me last you trying to like, say i thought i was quite a big guy i mean your shoulders a bit <laughs> bit small mate uh, but no like you, you know what i mean like <laughs> they, they, like performance like elite performance have like the, those big fucking blokes who like compete and stuff like that and it was like for, for me it was amazing to see them because you know you sort of want to see what they do, how they get there and shit like that. And fuck me, like, it is a commitment and a half to, like, to be fair, Matt, like, um, if you do, like, end up going back into, like, trying to do a comp and stuff like that, props to you, because it's, it's fucking hard. It is hard. Props, after this, like, after... do, doing preps and shit, it, it's, it's fucking mega hard. It's a mega commitment. Yeah, it goes. And, like, if you, if you fuck it, if you if you don't stay true to yourself, you will fuck it, and you and you'll come out the other end worse than you were before. And I think more like mentally, it will be more scarring for you because yeah. you would have like thought to yourself, "Oh yeah, I can do this," but then say, you know, you have a cheat meal every fucking weekend of a couple of thousand calories and whatnot, or you're just not taking your training seriously enough, or whatever it is, then you obviously you're just going to ruin your own sort of like road for it. And it, it's fucking, it is hard. Like, yeah. I don't think anyone understands how hard it is to like, because some of these guys, like, they fucking cut out everything out of their life. Like, some of the, like, fucking more, like, more most successful IFBB pros cut out so much from their life and they're able to stay in such a fucking, such a trance of like doing the same shit every day and it's like that's their driver and uh, uh, fucking 95% of people can't do that 95% mm -hmm. of people couldn't fucking eat chicken and rice bland no seasoning fucking eggs fucking porridges every morning for like months on that time I can successfully say that I have done that mm. like I have done that I, I could do that 
I could do the diet part, but it's like, are they, uh, uh, with, with everything comes like the, the toll that it takes on you. Yeah. And uh, once you're cutting and you're cutting down to like a ridiculous amount of calories, I have seen like the fucking souls leave the person, like the person's body. Like you could just see a body, that's it. There's no person left behind because some people will take it so seriously that they will lose so much weight, so much like, so much energy because you're going to have to cut out so many carbs and shit like that. That it just fucking changes people. And some yeah. people can't bounce back from it. Like some people will never want to go back to that because it is fucking, it's, it's fucking horrible. But again, like with, with IFBB and like bodybuilding, like you are going to have to, like I'm not sure if you are going to take that road. If, I don't know if you, you you're going to cap yourself at just natural, but eventually to fire BB, you're going to have to take obviously you know supplements and shit like that because at the at the end of the day, that's the only way you can get there. It's not piddle paddle, you know. You're talking about steroids. No, I just you know I, I, I want to be you know, quite quite PG with it, but yeah, essentially yeah, steroids. But it, it's going to have to happen, and like I've never started taking steroids because I have quite bagged anger issues. And I thought, essentially what it does, it's it, like, it enhances your rage, but it kind of enhances like, quite a lot of things in your body. And I knew that if I was ever going to take steroids, my anger would go through the roof. And essentially, I'm scared of myself of what would happen if I ever have like a fucking like, roid rage. Because I have like rages like, yeah, from yeah. gaming and from like, life. Maybe and if not I, the person I live with. <laughs> fucking cow holy shit <laughs> but Matt, um, mate, I was winding him up last night <laughs> like we were playing COD and like and I was like the game before I was fucking I was fucking fuming man I was I was in a bad spot and Cam just came back from like having food and he just said you're right guys and I just fucking went at him so like, fuck you fat cunt <laughs> <laughs> and then and then, like obviously we had a little bit of fucking kerfuffle and then the next game like, I calmed down and like I was getting killed down. I was like, ah, oh, fuck, he got me. Ah, oh, he killed me. Ah, oh, he's using this, blah, blah, blah. And then Cam was saying to me, he's like, ah, oh, have you tried to like sort of getting better? Oh. And I was like, thinking, all right, Cam. All right, all right. Fair enough. All right, I'll take that. And then five minutes later, he was raging out of his asshole, man. <laughs> like he was smashing shit, screaming. I hear and then it. I just popped the fucking line, Cam, have you thought of getting better? <laughs> <laughs> and he lost his fucking mind. Oh, I love um, him. Matt, so are you going to go back into a competition? I've decided after this lockdown, I'm going to go back for it. It's, I think the problem I had before is going back to that like hard graft. I know what it's like. Like when you go, when you, I bulk in was fine. As soon as I got to cut in, cut in was going good for the start of it. And then as soon as your carbs start decreasing, your energy's depleting. You start increasing more cardio, your body starts going to a level where you're like, oh my God, I'm losing motivation. And that's yeah. where it got, to, it got to me because being on so low carbs and then you'd have a cheat meal. Now, I don't know why this is. It's a mentality talk. When I'm like normal like, like now with lockdown, like I'm eating the cleanest I've ever eaten. Like I'm not even cheating. Yeah. But the moment you're on a restricted plan and you have your own coach that tells you not to fucking eat cheat meals, there's some instance in your body is like, Do you know what, fuck this, I want a pizza. Yeah, no. <laughs> like, where it goes wrong. And that's what will happen yeah. to me. Like, it wasn't because I was, I was doing it for myself. It was always because someone was telling me not to do it. I was like, Do you know what, fuck you, I will eat a pizza. <laughs> like, and yeah. that's where it repercussed. And now it, it, it got to the point where my mentality went because I was like, I'm not ready for a competition because I'm cheating on my diet. I'm not doing this correctly. I'm not doing this. I'm not mentally prepared. But now since lockdown... I'm now more in a mind zone to go, I can do this. Like, that is what I want. I just, it's kind of like you have to take a step back and then realizing that you need to, what you need to do is push myself harder in the central fact. So yeah, I am going to go back to it. Once lockdown ends, I'm yeah. going to probably start back on the lean bulk because obviously losing so much size. Start back on a lean bulk and I think I'll probably look at PCA sometime next year, end of next year. Who was your coach? So it was a guy called Thomas Haynes. He's on Instagram. Do you know a YouTuber, Brandon Harden? I think so, yeah. I think I've heard of him. He uh, was a, he's a YouTuber. He's quite big now, actually. He did, uh, oh, what was it called? Body Power. Oh, yeah. He did Body Power and he won that in the European Championship. So he was his coach. So he got him to that. 
So I hooked, I, he's only, only lived in Worcester as well. Um, so he was training me through WhatsApp. So he was my online coach. And he was sending me all my nutrition plans, coaching plans, all that. And we do WhatsApp all the time. And then I had a posing coach who I would go to like once a month just to do like an online Skype call like this. And we yeah. would practice, practice posing, practice routines and things like that. So, ah, it, I mean, it was good. Don't get me wrong. Like, I got results from it. It's just my, the problem was my mentality went, and that's the hardest part of it. If you're not mentally prepared yeah. for it, you, you ain't going to get there. You have How to- much do um, the coaches cost? Because I, I would love to have like, because I've never, I've always worked out on my own, off my own back. I think it's the same with me, Lush. Like, yeah. we've both worked out off our own back. You know, we've researched everything ourselves. And we know, okay, what's good, what's bad, what's good form, what's bad form, what's good food, what's bad food. Um, but I always feel like when you have a coach, you, um, it's the same with like having a PT. Like, I'm very good at pushing myself and not stopping. I'm really good at that. Like, I could literally... Tomorrow, I could easily go and run that 10 kilometers. It may not be fast, but I could run it and I wouldn't walk. Mm-hmm. Like, I, would, I don't have that ability in my head to go, oh, I'm tired now, I'm going to stop. It's more like, think of the result you're going to get. Think of how good you're going to feel when you hit that 10K mark and you've done it, yeah. sort of feeling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, is, it, cause, uh, is it worth the money? For someone like me, for example, someone who wants to be athletic and more powerful more far uh, faster stronger in in my specific sport would it be beneficial to go and buy not buy but like go and uh, subscribe uh, i guess uh, to a coach yeah i would say so i i think it comes down to your research so research your coach first make sure that yeah. they're right for you because there's a lot of coaches that have their niche you know what they, they specifically train in and they'll be more experienced in one than the other so research your trainer first because it's like marketing. You know, when you, you look on the shop, you look for like a new pair of shoes. You will yeah. search thousands of websites before you find the right price and the right ones for you. It's like that with just like online coaching because if you know in the gym, you're fine. You, you, you know how to bench press. You know how to, you know, you know your form's correct. You don't need a personal trainer. You just need an online coach that will literally do a call to you that will say, this is your program. Here's your nutrition plan report back to me at the end of the week with your results and then we'll go from yeah. there. That's probably what you need. So yes, it is beneficial because it takes the restrictive part because you might not know something that the coach does know because he can analyze your, your progress and go, well, hang on a minute. You're not improving on that. Well, you're not improving on that. So let's analyze this. And then they can yeah. go through it. And it is beneficial to a certain degree. But obviously, again, it comes down to research. Research the trainer, how much they cost, what's their experience, are they good enough in what they do? It's like things like if you check their Instagram and you see posts, you know, like testimonials, things like that will, will benefit you to see like, okay, yeah, this is what, this is the sort of results I need and he can prove that by what he costs. How much did uh, your coach cost? Mine was... Should have asked, like, would that be worth for a student? Could a student afford him? Mine was £100 a month, but he is a, obviously a bodybuilding coach. Like he's a competition prep coach. So I think he's more on the expensive side compared to a lot of coaches. Yeah. But... Again, I mean, you could probably find the coach out there. There might be 50 quid a month. There could be a coach out there for 75. It, is, it depends on the coach because we're all self-employed, so they can charge you whatever they feel like. That's the thing. Yeah, because I feel like, um, especially like for the, next, for the few weeks after lockdown, I think that may be an avenue I might take. Um, but then, because obviously I can't do chest, which is a big, big problem. But in that time, I could grow my, my trunks out and get bigger legs. Um, more powerful legs so I may look it down the avenue of um, getting an online coach sorting out my diet sort out my shoulder so I'm going to be actually dropping off the the form today to hopefully get well not get corona but hopefully get um, a physio and stuff like that so set in motion because I think I don't know if hospitals are still running that um, but I want to try and get the operation done ASAP I don't think it's gonna it's gonna happen this time this side of yeah. lockdown, mate. You're probably gonna be looking at when everything's lifted. Yeah, because I, I might fucking coach. Anyway, I've, I've, I've I've thought about it. I've thought about it, but at the moment I'm not at the point where I am thinking of like getting that big. Yeah. Like I I know what I need to do to get bigger once I've cut down and maintained for a little bit. It's, it's going to be like sort of at that point when I'm doing that lean bulk, if what I want to achieve from it, like depending on how yeah. big I want to get. 
So yeah, coach at that point might be the one for me, but it might not. I've never thought about doing competitions and get into bodybuilding because I've got a hole in my fucking chest, so I can't really do competitions because it doesn't look right anyway. So I'm fucked for that side of things. But then you don't even have to do it for competitions, though, do you? Really, you can do it for anything. Like I'm not doing it for a competition; I'm doing it for sport. But yeah, you're doing it for sport. But the thing is, like, I don't play sports. Like the only sports I play are esports. <laughs> it's in the game. Um, so yeah, like I've, I've never thought of it like in that area, but we'll, we'll see what time brings really. Because I, I might get to a point where I've done this lean, like when I, when I lean down, I'm thinking, fuck, do you know what? I, I, I wouldn't mind doing a lean bulk and then trying to do a competition just to, to get to, just to do it essentially. Yeah. Because like one, I, I don't think Ty would ever let me become a bodybuilder. Because because. Um, the steroid juice. You won't. You don't have to use. You can go natty. <laughs> you will never make money doing a natural, being a natural bodybuilder. Oh, like no. if I'm not going to be a PT or be in fitness in some sort of way and doing like competitions, there's no point of me doing natural fucking competitions. Just for like, the, the, it might be just for the sake of it, just to do it. But there's not a lot of money in natural bodybuilding, is there, Matt? There's, there's no money in bodybuilding at all anyway, regardless, until you make it up to IFBB Pro. Yeah, yeah, IFBB, and that's when you make money, yeah. But even, like, the, I think, like, the, before, if you get to a certain size before you turn IFBB, like, the, the IFBB sort of, like, debut shows and, like, the pre-shows, you can make some money there. Yeah. But, yeah, it's not until you get to, like, the Olympia, the Arnold stages, that that's where the money comes from. And most of the time, if you're shit out of luck and you place really badly, you're not going to make that much money. So whatever you put in to food, training, supplements, steroids, you will not make that money back. If you don't place, like, top 10, top 15, you will not make your money back. And if you don't have sponsors, you've just pissed that money away. Yeah. So it's like, if, if, if at some point Tara was like, if, if that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do. And she let me fucking take steroids and try to work for the next 10 years to try to make my way to the IFBB pro stage. But that's still 10 years. Would you take them? I, I would never take them. I don't think I could ever, ever, because I know why people take them, but I would see it as, it's a bad way, I guess, to look at it because everyone has their own reasons, but I see it as cheating. Uh, yeah, like the thing is, I, I used to think of that as like, oh, if you take steroids, you're fucking cheating and stuff like that. If you think about it, right, it is something they can do to increase their chances of winning, right? And in the IFBB Pro stage, there is no restrictions on one you can take. Mm-hmm. So if you can get away with taking, but like even athletes in the Olympics, they take steroids. Exactly, and their class is cheating. Majority. Like, yeah, if they get caught. Yeah, but that. If <laughs> Because if you think about it, like, like, I don't mind, like, people, if people, if someone takes steroids and say, I take steroids, that's fair enough. But a lot of, a lot of people who take steroids go, no, I'm natural. You know, they don't. Oh, yeah, natural. yeah, no, I hate that. And then another thing is, like, when, if somebody who takes steroids, because I know you still have to work hard when you're on steroids, but it's like, yeah. it gives you, it gives you so much of a boost. Like, it, it works for a reason and it works because it works. Yeah. That I think it takes a little bit of the grind and the hard work out of it, you know, because it's like me, like me changing from good running two kilometers. Um, because obviously I'm not, <laughs> I'm not fucking built like Mo Farah. It's actually quite tough for me to run, um, anything longer than sixty meters. <laughs> but um, like they, it's like me going, okay, yeah, I'll buy this specific injection, and now I can run. From 60 meters, I can run the speed I run 60 meters. I can now run at four kilometers. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, well, still, I think it's, oh, I don't know. Again, mate, with that, right, you got to think of it this way, right? If, if you can, this is the mentality of most successful like athletes out there. If you can take something that will make you better than the rest, you will. There is like, at that point, if it makes you the greatest of your category, the greatest of your sport, right? And you could, if someone, like, for example, Usain Bolt, right? If someone turned around to him and was like, right, we've got the steroids that no one will be able to pick up for the next 10, 20 years, right? You will be the fastest, like, performing athlete, right, in the world by a fucking mile, right? And they said, no one will know. He will take that pill. I'd take that pill. If I was in the shoes and someone said to me, we have this steroid, it's going to cost you X amount of money, but it's untraceable. 
it will give you the boost and the performance you need to beat everyone. And obviously, and then you can do whatever the fuck you want with your life. I would yeah, take that pill. It's like, it shows off. It's like, it's like putting filters on Instagram pictures. Yeah. Like, you know, you know, like the ones which change how you look. Like, um, I think it's called face something or whatever. And it's like, it's not, because sports used to be, like when I was younger, you'd look at someone like uh, Jonah Lomu, Johnny Wilkinson, David Beckham, Rain Rooney, and you'd look at all them people and you'd be like, they're my heroes. They've done that for themselves. That is them through hard work, sweat, tears, uh, yeah, fair enough, natural ability as well, which has been finely mm. tuned to be a successful athlete. Athlete, And then you look at all of the people like uh, like that that cyclist, Armstrong, was it Armstrong? Yeah. Who, who injected. Um, and you look at him and you look at how far he's fell from, from it, you know, because he would have had such a... It's like if Beckham came out tomorrow and was like, I had this... I took this tablet before the game, which had, which gave me an unfair advantage. That is not what sports is about. It's about people being, and I think, I think everything should be natural, personally, as natural as it could be. And like, essentially, ethically, you're fucking cock on, and it yeah. should be. Every sport should be natural, but this is the thing that's wrong with our world. It's all about money. It is, like yeah. with IFBB, when you get to that stage, and like. Do you know how much the IFBB at like Olympia stage win, George? Some, is, Mad I know, I, like I, nearly I a mi- I, I think the latest one was a million, a million dollars, right? If there was a fucking million dollar on the stake on the fucking table for you to take, right? And you're in a league where no one gives a fuck if you take steroids. You will do everything you can to get that money. But that's that like- money doesn't come free. You cannot like you can't just like fucking piss out a million dollars i know but then you see like now like for example like matt could look at that i know i don't know if you do matt it's your decision whatever but matt could look at that now and go well you know i want to win i'm not going to put in a year of natural cutting and natural work you know feeling like shit because of the carb intake he might look at that and go well everybody else is doing it i'm going to do it but what happens if nobody did it and no well here's the thing there was a stage where no one took it, wasn't it? Yeah. There was a point when no one took it. And then one cut did. He won. Then he won again. And then we're like, well, how the fuck do you win? Oh, well, I've been taking this fucking magic pill. Yeah. Well, I'm going to take this magic fucking pill to get on his level. And then the other bloke in the line is going to do the same thing. And then the next guy. And then the next guy. And it all depends on the sport. Because, for example, with football, you don't hear a lot of people taking steroids. Because essentially... With steroids, you can't really take them to make you one good at running, that good at running, so essentially, because it's all your person, like it's your body's stamina, and then it's all about the technique. You can't yeah. take steroids to make your fucking technique a kick in the ball good. Like then you just can't, right? I don't know. You could maybe put a fucking tracker in the ball and attach it to your foot to always come to you, <laughs> but at the end of the day, that steroids are useless in football. But then in rugby, it's a different story. Like in rugby, if you take steroids, you can get bigger, build a lot more muscle, have a lot more of that explosive energy, and that puts you above the rest. It's a, like it's cricket a, as well. So I'm just going to, one more. Right. Cricket. Who the fuck would take steroids in cricket? What the fuck do you need steroids to sit on the fucking stand on the pitch for four hours looking for a ball? But yeah. for sports like that, you don't take steroids. You take, like, um, you take attention steroids basically it's like um the, a tennis star did it you know she took something that made her more attentive so her reflexes were quicker ah, it's more like not not steroids it's more like drugs done in it because like that's what like yeah 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 so like uh, xanax or like fucking animal yeah, or some yeah, shit yeah. like that yeah, yeah which like and, bounce your focus to the fucking sky yeah because like um i don't know who it was i don't know i think he played for the giants um but he came out and he was like he said to like a press conference, he said, if you think that the NFL is clean, you're living... You're fucking there. wild. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. he said, at least 60% of people on every single team are taking something. Yeah, fucking by far, mate. I think, it's, it, I think it's like that across all sports, but people turn a blind eye to like the top motherfuckers. Like if it's like a small bloke, well, one people might, people might not even give a shit, 
But if it's like a small cunt is going to like fight or like play against like a big, big name, right? And then they check that small guy. If he was taking something, then he beat that big guy. Then he can knock this fucker out. And then the main guy still wins. is victorious and they make money off him. But then that's, that's, Armstrong that's, was massive in cycling and he got fucking hell brought down. And yeah. Yeah. And I, like, that's essentially what can happen. And, like, you can see it from like anyone who's been caught for, for steroid use in a sport that they were not meant to use are going to crash and burn. Yeah. And I think it's good. I think a lot of sure. these things come out later down the line like yeah. they don't come out at the fucking event they're like you know he just fucking beat the world record i reckon personally i reckon usain bolt was on something when he beat those records i personally do not think he was natural like i don't know if he was taken out of the stage or he took it for his training that got him there but i don't think he was natural throughout his career to get to the stage where he was to beat those world records. And I feel like we'll find out in like five, 10 years, his medal will be stripped or whatever. But at that point, he'll be a fucking, he's already a fucking millionaire, living his fucking best life and does not need to have a fucking care in the world. And that's essentially what happens with a lot of these people. They'll get found out five, five 10 years later where they've already they make the fucking money that they can, right? And then what happens? Their their career their careers crash and burn. I say, oh sorry, but they, got their medals. Um, oh, shit, yeah. We've got less than a minute. Uh, well, should, should, should we cut it? Or I don't, I don't know. Is it gonna is it gonna fucking cut us out? You'll cut yeah. it out in, but yeah. Shit. All right. Are we gonna do an, a quick outro? Well, Matt. <laughs> right, someone else can do it today. All right. All right. Th- 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 thanks, guys, for watching. This has been podcast number three. Check out podcast number two and one in Matt or my YouTube videos. And thank you very much for watching. Make sure to like, follow, and subscribe to all of us. Everything will be in the description down below. Thank you all, and we'll see you next week. Peace out. I'm a, I'm a lone wolf. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a lone wolf. I'm a, I'm a.